a watch if they miss tonight. And here we go. We have a fairly full night tonight, lots of great information. And as usual, I'm going to start by turning it over to Patricia Miller, our CEO. Good evening, everyone. I can't believe it's already August. I know in my neck of the woods, it's starting to feel like fall a bit, which is kind of frightening to me. I feel like and we still have camps in session, uh, not to mention that other camps were just in operation. So um, it's really hard to picture that we're moving so quickly into the start of a new membership year. But again, as Amanda said, thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, I have a few things I wanted to just let everyone know about. One, uh, we're going to be looking for national council delegates. So I think Amanda's got a slide for me just with some data on it. But the next national council session is taking place, yes, in July of 2026, which seems a long way off. But um, it's not too late to be thinking about it. So we're going to be looking for delegates. Our applications will be going up on our website very soon. Probably look for it next week if you're interested. Um, and we will have the application with those <laughs> deadlines. All applications will be due by the end of December of this year because we need to elect our delegates uh, in the spring of next year. So we'll be uh, making sure that those delegates are elected. Huh. Oh, some people can't hear me. Can other people hear me? I can. Yes. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So we'll have to, uh, I don't know why Caitlin can't hear me, but I just wanted to let everyone know it's a three-year term and we really do need um, looking for folks from all over our jurisdiction, uh, 14 years old and over, as long as you're a US citizen to consider being a national council delegate, it's a great job. So that's like your way, Amanda. And then um, I just wanted to say, speaking of the national council session, and when I said it's a three-year job, it really is because um, our delegates have been called in to the first um, special session of the National Council uh, ever that I'm aware of that will be taking place in October. We will hold some special sessions with our membership to ask for feedback once we have those proposals in, uh, before us, which will be sometime in September. So it's uh, Beginning in Farnsworth, we can hopefully, and then leading up to the third week of October, we're going to be gathering your input because we know there is a proposal coming to increase membership dues. So I want that out there for all of you to be aware of that they are looking at increasing the national dues. Uh, it hasn't been increased for eight years. Uh, so that's something we'll be looking at. We'll be looking for your feedback on. Um, a lot of it is there's been a lot of inflation in the past few years. Technology in particular is extraordinarily expensive to maintain and keep up. So that's something the National Council delegates will be uh, voting on and considering in October, um, thinking about the full Girl Scout movement and well, it has impact locally, but wanted to get that out there for all of you to be aware of. Um, and then I know I'll have a session where we can, I can answer any questions as far as I know them in a breakout session later on. And also we'll be starting to talk to you about getting your feedback on some property issues because we're trying to get our long range property planning task force up and running. I know we've gotten some applicants in and that should be starting up soon to do some long range planning. Speaking of that, for those of you who are on this call almost exactly a year ago, you're going to remember that we talked about having to close our office in Williston and we were moving to a kiosk. Now at that time we promised that was a short term uh, situation while we evaluated further, we knew that that office wasn't being used and it wasn't meeting the needs of volunteers. So just to put it out there, we are in talks with two different uh, landlords regarding some long-term leases to create um, what GSUSA calls Dream Labs, a Dream Lab in the uh, Chittenden County area that would provide program retail support um, as well as have staff members on site. So right now the kiosk is continuing to operate while we engage in those leases. The national organization is helping us. Um, we are working in partnership with them. It's been something we've been working on for a while, but haven't been at the point where I can tell you more because we're still uh, 
negotiating some uh, leases and it's all kind of hush hush until we actually sign them some things. But finance committee gave it the go ahead the other night. Uh, we're really pleased with this and I appreciate the patience that so many of you have shown as we evaluate what's really long term best interest of what we can do. So there's that out there. Again, I can answer questions during any breakout to the extent that I can right now, since I don't have a signed contract. Uh, but just want to let you know that we were carrying out our promise to you that we made a year ago um, and that we would continue. And yes, the kiosk is currently closed because of staffing issues. So we don't have a staff member right now. We're lurking for a staff member. We're going to start getting it open on some weekend hours. But right now it's a staffing issue, which is why the kiosk is closed. It will be open uh, up and through um, we ever move anywhere else. Um, and the Dream Lab would include a retail portion of it um, very much so. So it's something we're looking into. I've got to get all the quote sites, all of these things, uh, but it's quite exciting and uh, it's quite expensive, but don't worry, we'll be out there seeking some financial support to make this a reality. And then hopefully we'll be able to bring it to other locations. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the rest of the team. I do wanna to apologize to everyone up front. I have been quite sick this week um, and I'm locked down at my house for various reasons, but I'm gonna try and maintain my energy level throughout this entire call so I can be here to support you all. So thank you. And I'll turn it back to one or the other of the Amandas right now. Thank you, Trisha. Okay, so I believe I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and Next, we are going to have the leaders, and I believe we have a couple cadets from one of our troops to talk about one of the trips that they did. So let me see if I can pull it up. Do I see my leader? We think she's the one that's on her phone, Amanda. So okay. I, the phone number. I'm here. <laughs> I, yeah, my um, my Zoom will not work. I'm not home, so I thought it would where I'm at, but uh, it is not. So I have called in, but I believe you should be able to see at least one of my cadets, maybe two. All right. Let me see if I can grab one of them and pop them over also. But if you want to go ahead and get started and talk about your trip, we would love to hear about it. Sure. Um, so um, we're here to answer any questions, but kind of the, the biggest reason why um, we went on our trip this year was uh, because for the first year we had uh, some middle schoolers. So our troops been meeting for the past seven years together, and um, we meet every single Monday, <laughs> um, unless there's no school, um, pretty much year round. Um, so we're really close troop. We are pretty much a big Girl Scout family. Um, so we've done a lot of, you know, camping and overnights and um, a lot of time together. And we felt that middle school was the right time for us to start traveling around the U.S. Um, and we wanted to make sure we didn't skip over the U.S. because I think we have so much here to offer that when we think about traveling, it's always going overseas or somewhere else. And um, we put it in um, the cadet court. So our troop is very, very girl-led. And um, we put it out to them to give us some ideas of where to go. And um, Aubrey uh, Pickering, who's on the call, came up with a brilliant idea that our first uh, first weekend away traveling should be to uh, Savannah, Georgia to see the Edward and Lowe's home. And, yeah. and it was one of, I think, my favorite Girl Scout moments so far. We just had an absolutely wonderful time. Um, I don't know if you want me to tell you about the trip itself or have the girls tell you or ask questions, but um, a big part of what we did is um, – one of the, or the volunteer that helps me with the cadets is um, called the city of Savannah and got a map sent up to us with all of the different um, sites to see. 
and we put it out to the girls to go through and each pick somewhere that they really wanted to go and somewhere that was uh, called to them from the map. So we had one girl who wanted to do museums, so we went to an art museum and um, we went to uh, the Telfair Museum and learned all about um, kind of the history there of um, how impactful they were for the town. Uh, we had another girl who wanted to go to um, the Slave Quarters Museum, which was very impactful for all of us, um, considering that our cadets um, would have been living in two different houses um, had we been alive back in that time. So that was quite impactful for us. Um, saw a bunch of the sites, but then obviously our biggest our biggest moment was going to see Juliet Gordon Lowe's home and to be able to stand in that room where we were told the first Girl Scout he was was, I think, a pretty big moment for all of us. I see Aubrey's on and she made I a comment. I see Aubrey's on and she made a comment. Do you want to talk, Aubrey? Do you want to talk, Aubrey? I'm um, sure. Yeah. I'm um, sure. Yeah. Um, I really liked um, Georgia. I really liked Georgia. I thought it was really fun. I thought it was really fun. My sorry, my thing is glitching like really bad. <laughs> I think um, I fixed it. I I just muted your troop leader. I think we were getting some um, feedback, so you should be okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I really liked it. We went to a lot of museums. We learned a lot of stuff, which I really liked. Um, the Juliet Gordon Low Museum was amazing. It was really fun. We got to see like painted portraits of her and like sculptures that she actually did and paintings so I thought that was really cool mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> awesome and I see yeah. I believe it's Dal Dahlia is that that Dahlia. Dahlia yeah sorry is that do you have anything you want to comment Oh, sorry. What was that? I saw one. Uh, there we go. Wait. Um, can you hear me? We can. Okay. There you go. Um, I just thought that all the museums were fun. And the city was nice. Awesome. And you, so your troop went to Savannah and you also had an opportunity to uh, go speak somewhere else, correct? Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Me or Dahlia? Either one. Um, sure, I'll say it if... Um, but we got to go to the, like, I don't know what it's called, but the, like, <laughs> the, the place where the government <laughs> is in New Hampshire. What's it? Okay, but, um, we got to go there and, um, the Senate invited us to go there and talk about and, like, give us, um, something for a bronze award and like and then we get to talk about what we did and to earn it and who helped us with it and why we did it it was really cool awesome thank you all for joining us tonight is there anything else um your leader or either of you wanted to say Sheena, are you still on? I am. Yeah, I have to keep clicking in and out to unmute and mute. Um, <laughs> but um, I wanted to say that um, this was the first year the girls really had something big that they had to um, raise money for. Um, that was, you know, for just part of our troop versus our entire troop. Um, and to see the cadets really go through and plan out piece by piece, they had 
everything budgeted out to what it would cost. And they broke that down, did the math themselves um, on how many fall products they had to sell, how many cookies they had to sell. Um, they each sold, the minimum they had to sell was 1,200 um, boxes. They all sold um, more than they ever had in previous years. And they were taking it upon themselves to call businesses and ask to set up booths. And I was just really proud of how much hard work they put into really figuring out what we had to do to make this trip happen and then really hit the ground running with making sure that it was something that was a possibility for them. So they worked very hard for it. That is so awesome. I love that they put so much into it and took so much ownership of it. That's absolutely great. Does anyone have any questions? Um, I think one of the other girls in our troop just got here. So maybe she wants to say something. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about how you got to the Senate House? Um, that one would be me. So um, the I really have an inside... <laughs> Um, with that because um, I work for the Senate. So um, I am I work at the State House. Um, so I'm able to talk to the aides and get that set up with the senators. Um, I did let council know um, that this is something that they will do. And I am more than happy to be a point person um, to help get you in touch with the right aid to help set it up. But um, really what it is, is when you have something to celebrate, such as, you know, they were juniors when they earned the bronze award. Um, but if someone were to earn a silver or a gold um, or have something that they really, really wanted to celebrate and felt like it was at this high level, um, we're able to get in touch with the senator and see if it is something from the town that they live in and see if it's something that they would be okay with presenting it on the floor. So what is it? What it is, is it's a uh, Senate resolution. Um, it gets presented on the floor in front of the entire Senate during a Senate session. It's in the Senate um, uh, minutes for forever. <laughs> um, it's a broadcast live on YouTube, um, but it's just a really nice way to call attention to the hard work that these girls are doing. Um, and I will say the amount, and um, Haven, Aubrey, or Dahlia can speak to it, but the amount of senators that came over and really had an interest in in what they did and asking them questions and, you know, the women senators saying, I was a Girl Scout or I'm a life member. Um, it's, I think, just always so nice for our scouts to see that we're not just saying powerful people and you know important people were girl scouts they're actually talking to people that really were so um if anyone ever wants to do something like that i'm more than happy to share my um my work email or phone number and can try to help you navigate that that is awesome thank you so much absolutely If we have no other questions or anything, I'm going to go ahead and move on tonight. But thank you, Aubrey and Dahlia and Haven and everyone for joining us tonight and talking a little bit about that. I appreciate it. Thank you we, so much. And we will go ahead and go on. And I believe it looks like next is going to be me. Um. Talking a little bit about recruitment, as you know, we are already in August, which is still, you know, absolutely insane to me that we're this far into the year. Um, so as we're moving in, just like many times, you know, recruitment is out on the road. You have Mitchell and Shay, who are currently my two recruiters. They are in and out of just about everywhere they can possibly get into to go ahead and um, get into the school open houses, back to school nights, many of our fairs, festivals, and things like that, please make sure to take a moment and take a look at the Sign Up Genius and 
see if there's anything in your town that you would be able to help us out with. We'd really appreciate it. It's always best at these back to school nights to have someone local. And you don't necessarily have to go to your school's back to school night because we understand that you're probably going to be going with your children to those nights. But maybe you go to the next school over or the next town over and trade out with a different leader so that we have the opportunity for you to actually to talk with any of those interested families one on one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go into membership numbers real quick. So as of close of business last night, we had 6019 total girl memberships and 2477 total adult memberships uh, and 1564 were lifetime memberships. That leaves us with retention rates of 71.6 overall, 67 for girls, and 78.6 for adults. And we are, these are going to be links that are for the Sign Up Genius, as we've talked about many times. It's going to be put in to the chat for you. We also have the link here for the job form to tell me about events, whether it's that you need flyers for an event, whether you think there's an event that we need to be at, or if it's any other kind of retention or recruitment support that you're looking for, use this to fill it out so that we can help you however you may need. That's what we're here for, is to help make sure you're getting what you need in your communities. Um, one of the cool things that we are doing this year is all of our flyers are going to have QR codes on them that are specific to your community. That QR code is going to take that person directly to a page where they can put in their information and then select where they heard about us or where they saw us so that we can make sure we're getting them all the information they need when we speak to them the first time. This is going to help us, you know, better contact and track everybody and make sure that everyone's getting the attention that they deserve and that they need and getting their questions answered. And I believe that that is everything on my end. I don't see any questions or anything. And I believe next is gonna be Amanda Powell with volunteer support. That's me. Um, you can pop over the next slide. I always love to introduce our volunteer support team. So we have myself, I am the volunteer support team lead. Uh, we have Anne-Marie Yorio, who is one of our volunteer support specialists, um, primarily focusing on new leaders. We have Carrie Zames, who does a little bit of a lot of everything and does all of our travel. And we have Alessa Bagaglio, who also focuses on new leaders, and Dee Dee Rice, who does the experienced leaders and a lot of our troop finance and is very helpful for those. <laughs> Next slide, please. Um, so just some nice topics for us to go over today. I wanted us to start thinking about kind of back to troop. Um, some of you may have been meeting over the summer. Some folks take a break over the summer. These are always some good things to think about as we move into the fall and the new Girl Scout year. Um, so as we get closer to October 1st, just make sure you're checking your membership registrations. Um, this means both for adults and for girls. Um, you just want to kind of make sure you're checking in your MyGS account to make sure all your girls have renewed, all your adults have renewed, and of course that you're welcoming new girls and adults. Um, new girls can join at any point throughout the year, and new adults can join as well if you have positions open in your troop. This may be someone that has a kiddo in your troop, or it might be like a new college student, a community member that is looking to get involved in Girl Scouts. Um, so just make sure that you're keeping an eye open so we can welcome those new people as we're checking our registrations. You also want to make sure that you're checking that participation catalog and send us those updates if necessary. Um, meaning, <laughs> if your troop location has changed, your meeting time has changed, the grade levels you're open to is changing, you want to make sure you let us know um, so we have the information listed correctly. Um, the information is not correct, we will still ask that you take those girls that join just so we can make sure they have a space. Um, and really important too to check the size of your troop um, and also making sure that those girls have renewed because there are spots to join open in the troops right now. Um, if your girls haven't had a chance to renew yet, 
make sure you reach out to volunteer support um, because we can temporarily unlist your troop to make sure your members have a little more time to join. Um, and we'll relist that on October 1st for you. You also want to make sure that you're touching base with your troop members. Um, if you haven't been meeting this summer, now is a good time to kind of start sending out some emails, Facebook messages, texts, whatever it is that your troop uses to communicate, just to make sure people are still thinking about Girl Scouts and getting ready to gear up for the year. And of course, you want to plan that back to troop meeting and print those required paperwork. Um, my team is working on updating the troop packet right now, so we should have that ready to go soon um, with all the new required forms and stuff that you'll need for the new year. Um, primarily, you want to keep an eye out for those permission forms and the annual his history form, health history form, um, to make sure you have all of those on file for everybody in your troop. Again, both for the Girl Scouts and for the adults. Um, really important to have all those on hand. And start planning that first um, parent guardian meeting of the year. You know, setting expectations, setting boundaries, making sure people are helping you out, getting the supplies that you need, setting dues. It's just really a great time to kind of recenter and have all those conversations. Um, and of course, if you need a hand planning this or wanna like bounce some ideas around, my team is always super jazzed to talk about this stuff. So reach out to us, we're here for you. <laughs> um, you wanna make sure too that you're taking a look at your troop bank account, especially if you haven't been active over the summer. Um, you always want to make sure you're keeping an eye on it, checking it at least once a month, even if you're not active, um, just to make sure that no one has been able to do some light fraud in the account. Because as we all know, that happens to all of us at some times, unfortunately, can also happen to Girl Scout accounts too. So just make sure, taking a little peek at it, see where your funds are at, and make sure everything looks right. Let us know if it doesn't, we can help you navigate that world. And by we, I mean Dee Dee because she is a rock star. <laughs> um, <clears throat> make sure that you review that troop packet. Like I said, we're working on getting it updated for the new year. That's gonna have all kinds of great information in it from running your troop to how to address bullying in your troop meetings, safety activity checkpoints for any activity you might like to do policies and procedures, all of that good stuff is all right there in one handy dandy space. Check out the volunteer toolkit too. Um, that is your digital assistant, can help you set up troop meetings, keep track of when you're meeting, lots of great information in there. And as always, take a little peek through GSLearn if you haven't looked in a while because we've been putting more stuff in there and there are some goodies I'm very excited about. <laughs> Next slide, please. And to talk a little bit more about training, um, my team has a couple of virtual trainings coming up. We have positive behavior intervention support um, on 917, which is six to eight. Um, that one will, it's like a behavior management training, which will teach you how to positively address behaviors. Um, so we can encourage our Girl Scouts to be showing the behaviors we'd like to see in this group setting. Um, I also have Youth Mental Health First Aid coming up on 921, which is from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. There is a $25 cost for that one. And this one will teach you how to respond to a mental health crisis the same way that you learn how to respond to a medical crisis when you get certified for CPR First Aid. Um, that is a wonderful training. I love that I can offer this for our Girl Scout Council. Um, and I truly love to come and do it with just troops, too. So if this time does not work for you, reach out and let me know. I'm actually heading up on Sunday to do this with the troop in person. Um, so there's plenty of opportunities to do this. I just need a minimum of four adults that can come and do this with me. And then we can have a great time and learn about youth mental health first aid together. <laughs> We also have contract resolution training that is available by request on GS Learn. Um, it's really wonderful. Um, so we can put that on for you if you need it. I forgot to put this on this slide and I am sad. So I'll find a link in a little bit when I'm done chatting at you all. We have a new patch um, with the content was shared with us by another council and it's called No Problema and it teaches the Girl Scouts how to do contract resolution. And it is a delight. Um, so I'll share that in a little bit too, because it's a really good one. <laughs> Uh, next slide, please. 
Um, as, as we're talking about training, I'm going to keep right on that track. Um, you should have seen in your Outlook and the VSC News that we have a new required training. Um, and that training is on child abuse and neglect prevention. Um, understanding that, I'm just going to talk about this for a minute, not go too deep into detail, might be a sensitive subject for some people. If you need to kind of mute for a few minutes, totally OK. Um, so we have this child abuse and neglect prevention course that is now required. We know these are really difficult topics to think about, um, but the prevention of abuse is a topic that we take really seriously. Um, this training that we can now offer will prepare supervising adults of Girl Scout youth uh, to recognize, respond to, and report concerns of child abuse and neglect. Um, this also, with those supervising adults, will help empower you to prevent abuse by learning our recommended practices, policies, and procedures. These are proactive measures that we've put in place um, to prevent abusers from interacting with Girl Scouts to foster a safe space for these kids to thrive. Um, this mandatory training is going to need to be completed by October 31st. Um, anyone that is not able to complete it by then, we will have to remove you from your volunteer role because this is now a requirement for all volunteers to have this training. Um, that being said, you are so important. We love what you do for us. We really appreciate your attention to this requirement. Um, if for some reason you don't think you can get it done by October 31st, please reach out and start a dialogue with us um, as soon as possible, um, just so we can kind of make sure we're all on the same page moving forward. Um, this training is going to take you approximately 50 minutes to complete, and it will be, need to be renewed every two years. So just tuck that away in the back of your mind um, that this is now one of our required trainings, and it's going to be really good for us to all have this information so we can be you know, protect our Girl Scouts and be advocates for children um, that we all have in our lives. So next slide, please. Uh, this is for leaders right now, Danny. Um, but if you would like like helpers in your troop to take it, we can definitely chat about that, making it available for them. <clears throat> um, to kind of wildly- Sorry, Jen, sorry yeah, Jen, no. is, um, was, was Danny asking about the, um, the child abuse prevention training? I, I think so. Okay, so that I just want to clarify that is required for all volunteers, mm. not just troop leaders. Sorry. <laughs> so it's required for all volunteers. So helpers would be included in that. So anyone who has in, um, in a volunteer position is required to take that training. Perfect. Thanks, Gary. Cookie volunteers also. Correct. Beautiful. Thank you. Um. So just to kind of switch over to a different topic, um, we recently had an incentive for troops that had 80% or more Girl Scouts renewed into their troop. So if you were able to renew 80% or more of your girls by, a, by our deadline um, at the end of June, you were able to win a VIP day at the Girl Scout Expo, a $100 store gift card, and a third one that just escaped my mind because no one selected that one. <laughs> um, so we had our three winners. So Troop 60284 um, was pulled randomly and they got a $100 store gift card. Um, Troop 62048 also selected the store gift card. We also laughed when we randomly pulled these and had troops that were just two numbers switched. <laughs> and we finally had Troop 61654, which I believe their leader is in our chat right now, um, who selected our VIP day at the Girl Scout Expo. So I'm really excited about that one too, so we can get our VIP day together. Um, and we just wanted to shout out to our service units that had the most renewals um, with the highest number of troops that renewed the highest number of girls. Um, so a nice shout out for SU 226, 252, doing some little applause, um, 210, 203, 221, 223. And 233. So, congratulations to our troop winners and to our service units that had the highest number of renewals. Love to see it. Great work, everybody. We really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, next slide. I think I have a couple more. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, so this is our current incentive that we have. If you're able to renew by September, register, sorry, by September 30th, 2024. Um, so for new registrations, kind of think of it this way. Um, if we're starting up a new troop, we can do reimbursement for two troop leaders once the troop has fully formed with those two active leaders and a minimum of eight Girl Scouts. We will get you $60 new troop startup funds, which will go right into the new troops bank account. We will get the membership pins and tabs for the two troop leaders as your official uniform. A Girl Scout leader bag for two troop leaders to help keep things organized, which will be while supplies last. You will get the new leader binder and the full volunteer support provided by my lovely team at the Girl Scouts of the Green and White Mountains. So if you're if you, you're thinking of starting a new Daisy troop, you have a couple of friends that you think would love to start a new Brownie troop, have them reach out because we can help pull this really wonderful thing together for them. And next slide, please. And I think this is my final slide. Just a little friendly reminder, your troop financial report was due on June 30th. If your troop hasn't turned it in yet, you will have received a reminder in your email last week. Um, please just get it to us as soon as possible. It's really important to complete. Um, if you need assistance filling it out, you need a hand, you just wanna talk through some things, again, just reach out. My team would be happy to chat with you, um, kind of help work through the report, any questions you might have. Um, we're always here to help out with things like that. So thank you, everybody. Um, I will take a look at the chat, make sure I didn't miss anything. I think that's my last slide. Let's make sure I'm not misremembering. <laughs> yes, thanks everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. And I believe next we are going to be going over to Christine Airy with Girl Experience. Thank you so much, Amanda. Can we go to the next slide, please? Um, I'm just yeah, reminding everybody of what my wonderful team looks like. Um, we are all um, just kind of wrapping up, um, although we still are in the midst of Camp Kettlefern a excellent camp season. So I have Paula Kelly Murphy on my team who focuses on our partner programs, our vendor programs, and also travel. Ashley Jerome, who's the coordinator of our day camps and also provides program support throughout the year. Cassandra Gilson, our program lead. Ashley Guerin, program specialist. And Laura Barrett, program specialist, focusing on our virtual programs. And then um, we have lots of wonderful um, summer camp staff. Um, and then also several on-demand staff that help to support our program um, experience at this council. And if we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, we have lots of great programs coming up this fall and we wanna make sure you're all aware of them and can take advantage of them. So the first one I wanna talk about is actually um, for adult volunteers and this is our adult camping weekend. Um, happening at Camp Farnsworth, Farnsworth Weekend. It's September 6th through the 8th, um, so it's coming right up. Uh, we are back to the full weekend, so we'll be coming in Friday night. Um, you are on your own for dinner Friday night, kind of traditionally how it was um, before, uh, but we'll be having a um, newcomer orientation Friday night as well as game night and campfire um, experience. Then Saturday all day, we'll be having lots of workshops. All those meals will be provided in the dining hall. Um, and then um, again, some evening program Saturday night with um, some campfires um, and then a final workshop Sunday morning with also um, Sunday breakfast being provided. Um, registration is open now. The cost for the full weekend, Friday through Sunday is $90. Quite a steal if I say so myself. Um, and then if you're only interested in coming on Saturday for the day, the cost is $65. Uh, we will be having our volunteer recognition ceremony at lunchtime that day. Um, so definitely a great opportunity to come out and um, see different volunteers getting recognized for different things, um, including just the number of years that you've been involved with the organization. Um, and so that is Farnsworth, and I'll get a link in the chat in case anybody is still looking to sign up. Plenty of space is still available. And the next slide, please. Uh, two weekends after Farnsworth weekend, we have our adventure workshop, or sorry, it's adventure weekend. Um, it's a typo on my part. I apologize for that. 
Um, so our adventure weekend is a um, outdoor camping weekend for older girls. So for our cadets through ambassadors, um, happening on September 20th through the 22nd. Um, and it's an opportunity for these Girl Scouts to come together, to meet Girl Scouts from across our council, to try um, different activities, um, somewhat similar to Farnsworth Weekend, if you're familiar with that. They'll have lots of different workshop opportunities to choose from. Um, Girl Scouts can come with their troop or they can come as individuals. Registration is currently open and the cost for the weekend is $100 per Girl Scout, $80 per an adult. And again, I will provide a link. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them um, in the chat and I will go back through that. And the next slide, please. Um, and another um, fun day that we have coming up, an opportunity for um, Girl Scouts to participate in as a troop or maybe as a family is our Girl Scout Day at Fenway. Um, and so this is a very exciting event because it's being um, promoted all across all of the New England councils. Um, so I think there'll, there'll be a huge representation of Girl Scouts from all across the New England area. Um, and so you can purchase tickets for the game on that Sunday, September 22nd. Um, and the tickets will include obviously the game, but also um, access to a um, pre-game Girl Scout parade. Um, and I apologize again for my typo there, um, as well as also a custom patch. The cost per the tickets are $35 per person and the ticket sales will end September 2nd. And I'll also drop a link for that program into the chat. Next slide, please. I'm actually gonna pass it over to Carrie for a moment. All right, hi, my name's Carrie and I'm the VP of engagement. I'm able to work with many of the staff that you've already heard um, present today. And I'm just gonna jump in and talk a little bit about the expo, which is coming up on October 5th. And to start off with, we have a little quiz to see how well everyone um, has been paying attention to our promotions and what you might know about the event already. So to start us off, um, who do you think should attend the expo? So pick which one you think is the right answer. And we're gonna. Oh, I can't, because actually, does it give you all the questions? This is a little bit different on my screen. I think it maybe does. So if you click through, there are actually three questions and I think you'll probably catch on pretty fast. Um, I'm gonna see how the um, answers do here and then we'll see how well everyone does and share a little bit more. Well, looks like several people have already made it to the third question, so. The fourth question even, I can't even remember how many questions I wrote. There are four questions. <laughs> All right, actually it looks like the first question is there twice. So that really is a trick question. Um, all right, so I think we've made it all the way to the end. Then hopefully you see that who should attend the expo. This event is open to everyone. So we encourage you to share information with your um, Girl Scout troop. We have several troop leaders on the call tonight who have brought their troops in the past. If you'd like to share any of your um, experiences in the chat, that would be great. So it's a wonderful place to bring your troop. You can learn about possible field trips. You can learn about badges and patches. You can actually earn requirements towards several um, of those while you're at the event. It's also great for families. We have a large number of families that come. They bring brothers and cousins and grandparents um, and explore all of the different exhibitors. You can learn about new enrichment programs, maybe after school programs to join, karate, um, find about places that you might go for your next New Hampshire, Vermont staycation. Um, and it's open to the public as well. So you can share it with neighbors or perhaps um, friends that have been interested in learning more about Girl Scouts or who just have families and wanna learn about other resources of available um, in our two states. So we'll have a variety of different things there to participate in. There's a large STEM zone. There's going to be a mental health area. You'll be able to learn about some of our recent Gold Award Girl Scouts and the projects that they have done, um, as well as visit with exhibitors from a whole variety of family-friendly um, businesses. We will have a life-size inflatable whale that you can walk inside of. Um, we'll have Alex the Magician, who if you attended last year's cookie rally in Vermont, um, they will be returning. They had a great performance there that was very well received from um, all of the attendees. So they'll be performing again at the expo. It'll be an archery range. Our STEM van will be there as well as the UNH STEM van. 
um, WZID will be on site um, and over 75 different hands-on um, exhibitors with activities. So it's definitely great for families. If you've been to other trade shows, you might be used to just kind of going around and collecting brochures. Um, but at the expo, each of our exhibitors has something that families can engage with as you visit the booths. And then we have a full schedule of stage shows um, as well as our own um, programming and activities. So I'm going to show a short little video here while I keep talking if it works on the slide. Hmm. Amanda, do you need to click it perhaps? Um, the retail store will also be there with um, a selection of uniforms and t-shirts and other products from our retail store. Um, and they'll have a separate space that's just focused on Build-A-Bear. So you'll be able to build your own bear um, and select a variety of um, clothes that you'd like to purchase. So I don't think the sound is working, so that's all right. I can keep talking as, um, as you see some of the photos from our last event that was two years ago. Um, in this week's and um, the next few newsletters, you'll also see we are looking for volunteers currently to help with some of the um, activities that are going on during the event. So if you have high schoolers or if you um, yourself would like to volunteer, um, you are, can sign up for two hour um, segments of the day and then you'll receive a free ticket for the rest of the day. So you can come and volunteer for two hours and then still have plenty of time um, to explore the rest of the expo either before or after. Um, and there's a link that we'll put in the chat in a moment so that you can um, sign up through that link. I think there's one slide, Amanda, that has some additional details. Oh, Rachel has already put that in the chat. Thank you. Um, we're also open to volunteers from other organizations. So if you're part of any um, rotary or service clubs um, that might be interested in helping for the day, um, please feel free to share that link with them um, and we'll be able to have them assist as well. We are offering a special incentive. The first 500 tickets um, that are purchased will receive a free um, expo bag on site the day of the event. So you can use that to, to collect all of the goodies that our exhibitors will be handing out. So that's the first 500 tickets that are purchased through our website. There are two different links on there, depending on whether you have um, a Girl Scout member in our system, you can use our GS event system, or we have an event um, site through For a Good Cause where you can purchase um, tickets if you're not part of the, the Girl Scout system already. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, this is our largest event um, of the year and a great way to get excited with Girl Scouts from across our council about all of the variety of opportunities and resources that are, are available for Girl Scouts. So we hope to see you there. Thank you, Carrie. And Amanda, I believe I have a few more slides to finish up. Yes, so another great um, event that we have coming up this fall, um, the weekend after the expo, um, is an older girl camping weekend, again, um, for our cadets, seniors, and ambassador Girl Scouts. This one will be happening in Richmond, Vermont at Camp Twin Hills. Um, and it is a opportunity for the Girl Scouts to test their wits against our puzzle master. Um, and doing lots of one-of-a-kind um, kind of escape room style puzzles. Um, and it should be a great weekend. This is happening Friday, October 11th through Sunday, October 13th. And again, the cost for that program is $100 per person. And next slide, please. Uh, we also have a um, Girl Scout night with Ringling, the greatest show on earth. This will be happening on November 15th at 7 p.m. in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, and these tickets kind of similar to like when we do Disney on Ice or the monster truck rallies, um, we will have them available for sale. Um, they are sorry, they, it is available for sale currently on our website. Uh, this is a, a program where girls are not able to use their program credits, but it is open to family members as well. And so you can purchase tickets. Um, as your Girl Scout troop or as an individual family, if you're interested in attending this event. And the next slide. Some great programs coming up this fall. Uh, we also have several adult trainings um, on the calendar, and we're also working to finalize some dates on a few more to get up on the calendar. What we currently have up there are some basic outdoor living skill trainings. So if you do not currently have um, outdoor skills trainings to be able to take your troop out on an overnight 
these are some opportunities that are available for you. So in the month of September on the 14th and 15th, we'll have one happening in Richmond, Vermont, and then one happening in Thetford, Vermont. And then in the month of November, um, we'll have one happening in Bedford, New Hampshire, and then one in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. We also, this fall, will have an advanced outdoor living skills. Um, you don't have to take our outdoor skills trainings in any particular order, um, but we do ask that you take an outdoor skills training so that you're learning kind of the Girl Scout safety specifics for taking your group camping. So if you are um, an experienced outdoor person, um, you can definitely just jump right into an advanced outdoor living skills training. Um, the canoe one will be focusing on taking your troop um, to do some like backwoods camping via a boat, um, specifically a canoe. Um, and so it'll be talking about how to pack your materials and all that great stuff. Um, and so that will be coming up September 14th through the 15th in Thetford, Vermont. And then we'll also be offering our Girl Scout small craft safety training. Um, and so this would be the training you would need if you wanted to take your girls boating. Um, and this would be for just like a simple afternoon of boating. Um, but this is the Girl Scout training that is provided by GSUSA, and that will be happening on September 15th. We are currently working to finalize some dates for some CPR and first aid training, and we'll get those up on the calendar as soon as we have them firmed up. And I might have one more slide. Yes. Um, so we had the, that great troop that talked earlier about the trip that they did um, down to, Atlanta, or to Georgia. I almost said Atlanta, but they went to Savannah. Um, and so we just wanted to make sure you're aware um, that obviously your troop can travel anytime you might like, and you would work with Amanda Powell and her team to plan that trip. Um, but as a council and also through Girl Scouts of the USA, we offer some travel opportunities. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of the Destinations program. And so Destinations is for our older girls, cadets, seniors, and ambassadors. And there are opportunities for them to travel individually with a group of Girl Scouts from potentially across the country, maybe even Girl Scouts overseas, um, to experience different um, destinations. Uh, this past summer, we had a group of 22 girls from all across the U.S. travel over to London and to France for 12 days. And this coming summer, um, our council, Girl Scouts of the Greenwood Mountains, will be offering a destination to Iceland. Um, and so there are lots of councils across the country that are offering destinations. Um, typically, most of the international destinations are for girls um, once they're, or for Girl Scouts once they're in those high school years. Um, but there are several domestic um, destinations where the, here within the U.S. that um, are open to cadet Girl Scouts. And so I will drop the link to the destinations page in the um, chat. But we also have a travel meeting coming up on September 18th. And this is an opportunity to meet with Paula, who is our council staff member that focuses on um, our any council trips that we offer and also working with girls that are interested in applying for destinations. And so she can help you with this process. There is an application that is required to apply for a destination. Um, and she can talk with you through the application process. Um, potentially maybe answer questions, general questions you have about traveling with the destination um, and then different things like that. So if you have older Girl Scouts that are interested in doing some traveling, this would be a great opportunity for them to learn more about their opportunities that are available to them. And I think that is probably my last slide. And it is. I was going to say, Amanda, I think because of um, we're obviously getting closer to the eight o'clock time, maybe um, we can give um, anyone the opportunity who needs to leave um, to do that. But if anyone has questions about some of the topics that we're going to be covering in the breakout rooms, we can um, hang around to answer those. We absolutely did go a little bit over tonight. I'm happy to open up the breakout rooms if anyone does have questions and wants to go ahead and go into them. And I understand that we, you know, we appreciate your time and we understand we are running over tonight.
Yeah, so I'm going to come off mute for that question from, from <laughs> Danny. Uh, we don't have an estimate yet because I don't have a lease agreement yet. Uh, but that's actually one of the conversations I'm going to have a uh, discussion with GSUSA about uh, next week is um, is what a timeline might look like given everything that needs to happen to get it up and running. But uh, it would probably, uh, I'm just taking a wild guess out there. Don't hold me to it, but I'm guessing six months. I'd really be aiming to hopefully celebrate by the Girl Scout birthday. But like I said, don't hold me to it because we still need our landlords on board. So. I will also share on my end that I had some conversations that we were going to engage in, but I need much more time than this, um, around some strategy or property work. We will set up some special dates for those. So look for that. Um, we'll start maybe in our next volunteer town hall, but I don't want to take time away from any of our leaders getting the information they need for that. But we definitely will have some additional conversations for anyone joining us at Farnsworth weekend. There'll be both a board governance session then, as well as there's a time with Trisha session where we can have conversations about any of these things or find any of your board members or senior staff members or anyone um, wandering around the property throughout that weekend. I know Tara will be in front of a campfire with a bunch of pie irons in her hand. Um, would love to be cooking with you all and uh, I'll be wandering up and down the trails, um, maybe singing and maybe just uh, enjoying all of the free food I get when I go from campsite to campsite. So I'm um, always looking for your conversations during Farnsworth weekend. And also, like I said, the National Council does delegates will schedule some special meetings, uh, forum sessions, or if you have a community and you'd like us to come to it, uh, reach out to customer care and let us know. And also will uh, the Long Range Property Task Force, when that finally gets up and running, I was just going to start doing some preliminary work and maybe use it for our, our other purposes. Uh, but um, we'll, get, we'll get a lot of surveys going out to everyone with regards to that. I was reading all the surveys GSUSA recommends we send out. So we'll be sending those out to people soon. Some of our Girl Scouts have already started giving things. I had great feedback from our campers at Camp Twin Hills. I know Belle listened to them as uh, the girls uh, dreamed what they would want uh, at their properties. And um, dinosaurs, baby dinosaurs were the big request. Uh, along with kid mansions. And just in case you're wondering about the danger of dinosaurs, they were herbivores. So they would not eat the young children. So they were very thoughtful about this. We have very thoughtful young children. And then I know at Camp Seawood, the girls, um, some of you on Facebook might have seen the girls with their fairy camp that they designed, a special camp for fairies. And as far as I'm concerned, that's their, they, they helped design our own camp. Um, and I will be honest to say at both locations, swimming pools were at the top of the kids list. When we get beyond herbivores, swimming pools and playground equipment, you know, things like uh, uh, monkey bars and climbing towers, those, uh, those were, and slides were requested uh, at both of those sites. So anyway, those were what I was going to talk to, but it's going to leave not more than one minute. So I'll let you any other questions to ask anybody else. I am looking, I don't see any other questions. I think we got all the questions in the chat. I'll go through the chat again later and make sure there's nothing we didn't answer. Um, anything else before I let everyone get back to their evenings again, we appreciate you joining us and we did run over tonight. Yeah, We'll just blame it on the fact we're one month out of practice. <laughs> if that is everything then, Thank you so much again. We appreciate everything you do for the girls and we're looking forward to another wonderful year and we will see you again next month on September 10th.